Hello, Cody Reader here with another moderately exciting video. <laughs> Today I'm doing something that I've never done before. This is actually my computer screen here. See? And uh, today I'm going to be recording myself playing a Kerbal Space Program. This is my favorite video game. It's a flight simulating video game in the Kerbal universe, which is there. You can see a little Kerbanaut right here. There's Kerbin. He's standing on the moon. Anyway, uh, he lives in a solar system which is about one tenth scale of ours with uh, very similar planets and also very similar physics. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make a little video series recreating the Mars One mission. Let's go in here. See here, I've got. Uh, so I'll hit uh, Duna 1. Alright, so here's the planet Kerbin. Similar to the Earth. You can see, uh, when I zoom out, you can see it has a moon right there. It's called the moon. Um, zooming out more, you can see it also has another moon, but uh, we're ignoring that. Zooming way out, you can see here. And right here's my target, Duna. See, there's Kerbin, there's Duna. Let's uh, go ahead and set this as target and zoom in on it. And there she is. Looks very much like Mars. It's about the same surface gravity as uh, our Mars. Uh, about the same atmosphere. Very similar. The main major difference is this uh, big uh, annoying moon here, but that won't be too much of a difference. Anyway, going back to this view, you can see here where I have the planets lined up. The uh, Kerbin is 45 degrees behind Duna. And this will make it so that when I launch, I'll go out straight, and then the momentum will carry me up. I'll go out and 180 degrees later I'll reach the top of my arc and hopefully at the same time Duna will be there and we'll be able to land. <laughs> Alright, so here's the Space Center. Go into the assembly building. Okay, here we are, let's load our spacecraft. Let's, let's go with the communication satellite first. All right, here's the launch vehicle. Fairly small, very simple. Uh, two stages plus those boosters. More than enough delta V to get out to the Duna. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to have to go with three satellites because of that big moon. You see, I got three satellites here stacked on top of each other. But that shouldn't be too much different than the Mars One mission, and I'll certainly be able to communicate. Now, there'll certainly be one in orbit around that you can communicate with at any time. Let's go ahead and launch them. All right. And you know what? There's there's one thing I have to do. The uh, the moon is in a very bad place. You can see that it's actually in the way if I was to launch. So I'm gonna have to wait a day or so. To get that out of the way. All right. <laughs> Go down here. Let's uh, fast forward time a little bit to get to a good launch place. Let's uh, go ahead and launch this in the daylight, so you can all see what's going on. All right. Here we are. Guidance on, throttling up, and lift off of the first commercial or privately funded communication satellite to Duna. <laughs> uh, something like that. You can see the space center there as I'm flying off into the sky. Notice I throttled back because uh, uh, pushing against the atmosphere as I pass a speed of sound is just uh, wasting fuel. You want to just maintain the speed right around where the speed of sound is. And I start off flying straight up here. 
Notice I moved the camera around so that it uh, looks more realis realistic. <laughs> All right, throttling down even more because I'm speeding up a little too fast. Now we're reaching an altitude where the atmosphere is thin, so I can go ahead and turn over to the 45 degrees and throttle up as much as I can. Ditch those boosters and play with the camera a little bit. <laughs> Don't ask me how we're getting these camera views. Alright, so going back into the tracking camera. <laughs> This is the longest part of the trip, or part of the launch, where we just have to get as much speed laterally to the surface as possible. You'll notice that the rocket doesn't go up straight the entire way. In fact, most of the speed you need is to go across uh, parallel to the ground. The uh, speed that I had the launching up was just to get me above the atmosphere. You see, I'm trying to get... Uh, turned over in a nice arc and, event, and uh, up at the top of my arc I'll be traveling straight across yeah you can see I'm playing with the camera here again get a nice view of the space center getting farther away you can see the curvature of the planet now <laughs> all right I'm up on about a kilometer per second here uh, the orbital velocity is only about two kilometers per second but uh, that's because the planet's uh, a different scale than the Earth, but the physics is all pretty much the same. You can see I'm into the map mode here, which is the, let's just say this is the computer controls that the mission control would be seeing. And I'm just watching my Apple apps rise, and once that gets up into space, we'll shut off the engines, or in this case, uh, run out of fuel, because I had planned this just right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, ditch that second stage. Come on. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I watch that float gracefully away in the thin atmosphere. It's getting thinner as we're flying upwards. And that'll return back to the Earth, or Kerbin. Now, since we're up high enough, let's go ahead and ditch the fairings. Now this game doesn't have actual fairings, so I just have to pretend I ditched them there. I did have a nose cone, so that's, that's alright. Alright, let's go ahead and get the rest of the way out of the... up into space. Fast forwarding time here, just uh, coasting up to the Apple apps. You can see the uh, nose cones flying up above me way up there. Now I, I think, oh yeah, I remember I, I was testing out the solar panels and uh, communications real quick just to make sure before I actually put it into orbit that I don't end up with a dead satellite. Because if it's gonna, if it's gonna crash, I wanna want it to crash before I do the orbital insertion burn. But everything looks good. Let's put those away. <laughs> you want to uh, stow the solar panels when you're firing your engines because the extra forces could cause them to break. Alright, we're nearing the Apple apps. We're up in space now. So I just uh, point the spacecraft along the velocity vector straight at the horizon and then fire up that engine. And just a uh, Real quick burn to circularize the orbit. You see I'm uh, just starting to fall back to the planet, but I compensate the, for that pretty easily. Alright, see as uh, the, my trajectory is widening out, orbit is circularizing, and there you go, nice stable orbit. But we're not going to go for a complete orbit. 
In fact, uh, we're going to do the Duna insertion burn right about there. She's on the dark side of the planet, unfortunately. But that's where you have to do it. <laughs> the planet's gravity will curve you back, and you, then you'll end up uh, traveling off parallel to the direction the planet's traveling. At least that's the idea. Okay. All right, fire up that engine again. And off we go. Needs about a kilometer per second of delta V here. But this uh, vehicle is more than capable of that. Go back out in the map mode. You can see my orbit is uh, increasing as I'm adding energy. I can It'll fly up higher, more and more energy going in. Eventually, I'm going to leave the planet. You may notice that the uh, orbit is expanding exponentially faster. There's two reasons for that. One is that uh, rockets are more efficient the faster they're being fired from. And second is that gravity is weaker up high. Alright, so just building up some energy. Zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole orbit. There's the moon, passing the orbit of the moon. But uh, that won't be in the any bother. There, we got some escape velocity. Now we'll go off into interplanetary space. Zooming out here, you can see I'm already almost all the way up to the orbit of Duna. You can see there, sending node, that's perfect. And we have just about, there we go, we have an, the computer says we have an encounter. Just to decrease the periaps a little bit, yeah, that's good enough. You can see the, uh, once we reached escape velocity from the planet, it really didn't take that much energy to go the rest of the way out to Duna. And that's similar to the way it works in real life with uh, Earth and Mars. Really, the difference between going to the moon and going to Mars is very small. All right. So now we can deploy those solar panels, because I don't plan on firing this rocket up anytime soon. And we need the power, otherwise this thing will end up being a dead brick. Okay, yeah, got the solar panels out. Fortunately, we're still on the dark side of the planet, so let's go ahead and fast forward time until we're out under the lit side. Ah, there's the sun. All right. Let's uh, point the spacecraft into an orientation that it'll have good good solar exposure to those solar panels and basically just park it like that and, uh, now it just coasts the rest of the way off to Duna you watch uh, Kerbin falling away but uh, before I get too carried away let's go ahead and uh, stop and go back to I'm going to call this the end of the episode. I'm going to launch the other spacecraft while we're still in the launch window. So, uh, see you next time when I'll launch the demonstration lander.